Guys, we are here oral sessions. Ruby Soho in the his house. What up, girlfriends? Hey, girl. Hey. How are you? I'm good. Why are you so pretty for? Oh my sakes. God, listen, Look at you. here's what I think needs to happen. I think that these Zoom calls should be like Instagram where you can slap a filter over it because it's a lot of work when you're like, hey, can you, like even for me to be like, hey, can you come on and do like the show? It's like, mm -hmm. sure, but like, it's not, it's more work than that. You got to slap on at least a dab of concealer, a little of bit course. of blush and call it a of day, course. but like. Oh. Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't look, wake up looking like this. I had no. dried drool and hair was looked like I got electrocuted. All that, like this is. I don't wake like, up like this. I put on makeup. I put some stuff in my hair, but it's still all, like it's not great. But it's, it's as great. good as we're getting. Thank this, you. The room is just like making you glow. Well, that's. I mean, you. That's what you do. You get a loud wallpaper so that you can just blend in, like Homer Simpson, <laughs> like that meme of like, don't pay attention to me. Yeah. Look at the wallpaper. What is this situation <laughs> that you're working with in your house right now? Because it this, looks this, fantastic. This is my house. I um, bought a house a couple months ago, right before I got released. Perfect yes. Timing. Perfect. Timing. Um, <laughs> and uh, it is a uh, basically a restored barn. So like what you're looking at is my bedroom right now. Oh my God. Are yeah. there, are there like floors to this or is it like, a there's just two, space? just the two, like, yeah, there's a, there's two floors and everything. And I have um, a barn outside, an actual barn that has uh, two and a half horses in it. Two and a half um, horses. Yeah. Uh, I have two, uh, two big ones, two, uh, uh, full grown quarter horses and a mini. Um, you have is, like it's a mini horse that will stay a mini, a mini it's not horse. just a baby holy it's a mini oh my horse. god <gasps> it is actually it's cash's horse um, oh. he's um six months old and already has a horse um but yeah it's, uh, <laughs> that's sarah rose baby for people that yes. don't know yes yes um we we got him that so that when he gets old enough he can um, show her show her at the county fair her name is jelly bean oh my god God, yeah. how did she you looks more look like a, she looks more like a tootsie roll but you know <laughs> how did you find this little mini horse um all three of them actually uh came together and it was it was perfect really um my neighbor was moving um and she had been uh close friends with the woman who previously owned this house and she was moving and she couldn't take her horses with her and that was one of the big reasons i moved out here one that and Sarah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, she was telling me about it and it was perfect because they're older horses. My other two are brother and sister and, um, one's 22 and one's 19. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And so what is the life uh, expectancy of a horse not to be dark, but no, 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 it's live? good. Um, they're, um, usually a uh, full grown is about 30, um, oh, wow. miniatures grow or to be a lot longer like dogs like the smaller the animal yeah. the less health concerns that you're working with yeah. um so i'm probably gonna have jb for quite some time uh but that is yeah. so exciting yeah do yeah, i need to great. get a mini horse yes 100 percent. i feel like john will be very mad at me for saying <laughs> that but yes you know what he i feel like if i brought one home he'd be like what the f but then he would become obsessed with it. <laughs> They're the best. And you can have them in your house. Like you I was going to ask chill you, out. Yeah. Do you bring jelly. Bean I in haven't, house? I haven't brought JB in the house yet. It is, it is something that I am working towards because the, the dogs love him like lover, the dogs love her. And I think she would, she just eats everything inside though. So <laughs> I'd have to put legitimately I, everything on a different shelf. You jelly bean proof the whole house. Oh my goodness. She when, eats everything. When did this, um, country life kick in for you? Um, it was, like I said, I bought this, you know, I think a, a week before I had gotten released. Um, and I wasn't planning on getting horses that soon. Like it was something that I've always wanted. I used to ride when I was really little mm -hmm. and horses just make me happy. Like yeah. I just look at them and I, I smile and I like to hug them and kiss their nose mm -hmm. and they just make me happy. And I knew it was something that I'd always like dreamed of and I wanted to make a reality. So, um, you know, I bought the house with the anticipation of like, oh, you know, within, you know, a couple of years or whatever. And then when I got released, I had, you know, three months to, you know, I, I, I remodeled the barn because um, there hadn't been horses that lived there for years and years and years. And then, you know, everything just kind of fell into place um, with the three that um, I'd gotten from my neighbor and I just got it ready. And I got the horses probably, I want to say a month before I returned. So wow. I got to get settled and I got to just build this like little hideaway 
peaceful, beautiful thing out here. And uh, yeah, I love it. I love that's it. That's awesome. I'm in the I middle of that. absolute nowhere and it's amazing. Oh, what a dream. Okay. How long until um, Sarah gets you all strapped up and you guys are out uh, hunting together? Is this gonna- oh, um, so <laughs> there's, uh, so I have a lot of woods on my property and um, I think it's going to be more so like, I'm going to hang out, you know, with cash <laughs> and she's going to go do her thing. I don't have like, I'm all cool with what she does like go ahead do you think girl um but it's I, I I don't know if I could do it and I also am terrified to like make a noise and like scare something off and then uh, get the death glare from one of the rows yeah. like <laughs> I, I'm terrified of that so I've, I've woken Sarah up when she's been asleep before I know what that look looks like so I'm not trying to have that happen again are you gonna grow stuff out on your farm uh, is it a farm? I, is or is just a yeah, farm? yeah. It's a it's a farm. It's a farm. I I would say. Um, I don't have a very green thumb. I've tried to grow things. I have flowers out front. That can we died. work on this together? Because I would love that is to become a green thumb. And I say this to John. Um, and he, I kill cactuses, cacti. I can't keep anything alive. So maybe we can embark on this journey together. I would love that because I have a little area. Yeah. For like vegetables and whatnot. I think it was like, they did like, it was like a winer, like a winery. It's not vineyard, vineyard, not a winery. Cause that's I mean. after, but, um, like a vineyard area. And I am just terrified of it. Cause I, I planted lilies when I first got here and they were dead within like three weeks. And I was like, okay, well, and I, so I just, <laughs> I, I, I anything, bad. anything like, I'm like, oh, okay, fake plants. Cause I can't kill those. So my so, mom did that. My mom put a bunch of fake plants in my backyard and I just cannot get on yeah. board with this. What's should... going on behind you? Are they, are they fake or real? Oh, those are fake. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Those are fake. Anything because you know what? I come up in this room as much as I'm in here, I'm recording and I am in this room often. Mm-hmm. As soon as I leave the room and I close the door, I forget about everything that's in here. I did have an orchid back here, but rest its sweet orchid soul. <laughs> rest, rest it has gone up to orchid. plant heaven. <laughs> it's gone. You should, um, you should pick Brian Danielson's brain about what to grow out there because he's really a garden guy. Yeah. I did not know he was a garden guy. I will have to ask him about that. Oh yeah. Big time. I think at one point he was like, even considering going, is it like horticulture school? Is that even what you call it? Am I making that I up? Know. I feel like I that's the know. thing. We'll get him on the show at some point And I need yes. to talk to him about that. Yeah. He is the green thumb from what I understand from what uh, Bri has told me too. So we'll look into that. Anyways, uh, before we get into more wrestling stuff, you must've freaked out when you bought a house and got oh, yeah. from WWE. Full, full blown happened? panic attack, full blown panic attack. Um, I, I, it was, just, it was just unexpected um, yeah. is all. It was just super unexpected. Um, I didn't, I did not see it coming by any means. Probably wouldn't have bought a house. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm very happy that, you know, I, that I did and that it all happened in the time that it did, but I definitely had full blown, like crying and freaking out. And I ate a couple boxes of Oreos and like, just had like a full blown meltdown and, and, and thank God, you know, Sarah was Im- immediately, I called yeah. her. Hey, I got fired. I'm on my way. And she just came and just gave me like the biggest hug. And it was Mm. just, she like, thank God for her because I was, I was freaking out. And, and I went through waves of that over the, the 90 day time period of like, Oh no, I'm cool. I'm good. I'm going to be fine. And then I, and then panic and then, Oh no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then panic. Like it was just like waves of it that just kept coming. Um, but you know, right now I'm just so happy with how things have kind of played out and, and how things have just fallen into place so perfectly. Yeah. Oh, it's so, great. um, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not mad at all. It's funny how, um, that can kind of happen to like, I always feel like for, for myself, like at moments in my career where I feel like I'm like, what happened? What am I doing? Is everything okay? And it's always like those middle of the night thoughts that kind of creep mm-hmm. in and you're like, <gasps> and then you wake up in the morning, you're like, okay, everything's fine. I can sort yeah. it out. But it's always when those moments hit, that there's always something really great just around the corner. It's hard mm-hmm. to see that during that time. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. You're like, have I, did the, is my number being called? Did I go yeah. through this too many times that now I'm done? Um, but that, yeah, I always feel like that's the way that it goes. And all of a sudden, oh, that stuff all actually happened for a reason. Yeah. And now here we are. Ruby Soho is back, bitches. That's me. Yes. <laughs> How, Uh, yeah. what were those 90 days like for you of figuring out where you were going to go and what you were going to do? Um, 
it was definitely like when I, when I had first, it first happened, like I said, full blown panic. Um, but I knew that one of the steps in buying the house, um, whenever I'd bought houses previously, it had been either like for when I lived with a family member or for the guy I was dating at the time or whatever, I'd never bought a house for me. Mm. Um, and this was, you know, the first step in buying something for me, buying a home for me. And then I kind of wanted to just be like, okay, well, I made that step. Now the decisions I make going forward, especially now having been released, I need to start making choices for me. I need to start being selfish a little bit. And, um, because I, I loved, you know, helping, I want to take care of my family, you know, when I, now that I was financially able to, when I was with WWE and, um, I, you know, I, I did a lot of that, but I, I, I didn't focus on myself a whole lot. And, um, so that's pretty much what I spent the next 90 days doing is, is building a life for me for when I wasn't involved in wrestling in some what capacity. Is, what does that look like? Like, what does that mean of like, what do you want at like the core of you as, as you're kind of discovering this and peeling away all those layers of things you're doing for other people versus the stuff that you actually yeah. want? Um, the horses was definitely a huge start is like, that's not for anybody but me because that's, that's my love right there. That, that, those, those horses are just incredible. And then I've got, you know, my crazy other two, I've got my Corgi, Barney, uh, my Sharpay, Hoovy, And then I have my little, um, my little girl Bambi <gasps> here oh. who is in my lap 24 oh. seven. Um, so yeah, I got a little freak show going on over here, but you know, they're, they're, they're amazing. And, building this farm, which was never a lifestyle that I had anticipated liking. I, I fully blame Sarah for it. She's, <laughs> I was she's say, done it. How did she coerce she's you? She's done it to the whole squad. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> right. she did it to live. And then she yeah. did it to me. Like it's, she's, she's just, she's done it to all of us where she's convinced yeah. us that this was, you know, an amazing lifestyle. And it really is. Yeah. Um, it's, we all three have very different farms, very, very yeah. different farms, but, um, but farms nonetheless. And it's just, it's so peaceful out here. And it's just, like I said, I, I don't, I don't hear traffic. I don't hear anything. Cause I'm so secluded and, uh, and I am, you know, I, I go over to her house and we work out together and it's just a lot of like, okay, I want this. So I'm going to do it. Not like I want this, but you know, I have to do this for this or this for this person, or I have to make sure this person's good, whatever. It's just like, I want this, I'm going to do it and I'm going to get it. And so I, remodeled my house. I did a lot of painting. Um, I, like I said, remodeled the barn and I was just like, I wanted this all to be like perfect for when I came back. Um, and then, and then of course I had to kind of have a hard reset on the wrestler side of me where I'm like, okay, now it's time to build my brand, not somebody else's brand, my brand. And what does that look like? And I think that I have really found who I am and who I've wanted to present myself as, you know, for the first time. Cause when I was on the Indies, I, I don't think I really knew much of who I was sure. and like, and I was trying to co- like to concede to who somebody else wanted me to be in my previous job. So now this is the first time that I can really be like, okay, this is who I want to present. This is who I am. Um, and it feels great. It feels amazing. What did um, like those, vision boards, uh, I'll use whether they were physical mm-hmm. or just like what you were thinking about of who Roby, R- Roby Soho, <laughs> Ruby Soho is like, what were you looking at? What were some of the inspiration you were drawing from, or like the things that you felt were most important to you and to your character? Yeah. Um, I, I think rancid was the perfect beginning, like, like the perfect seed to be planted. Um, Mm -hmm. when I, I went on Lars's podcast and he bestowed upon me, Rudy Soho. Um, that's huge. Yeah, it was, it was, I, I, like, I want to throw up like when I was on camera, so I couldn't, um, but like, it was, it was insane. Like it's, first of all, it's crazy to be able to call like somebody who I've considered like a hero, um, my friend. Mm -hmm. So that's, first of all, that's nuts. And secondly, um, I wasn't going to do any other really interviews during that 90 day time time. I just kind of wanted to stay quiet and just like do a hard reset. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, when Lars Fredrickson asked you to do his podcast, you're going to do his podcast. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> um, and, uh, so we did that and we were talking about, you know, what my next name was going to be. I didn't really like Heidi Lovelace cause it was given to me 
and it was never pronounced correctly and it sounded like a porn star name. I didn't like it. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I kind of like was like stuck and I knew I still wanted to stay with Ruby because Ruby just felt like me when yeah. people would call me that, like I would respond, not just because I knew that that was my wrestling name, but it felt like me. Uh -huh. Um, and I told him that, and he was just like, I was like, and I also got it from Ruby Soho. That was the inspiration when I first found the name. He was like, why don't you just go by that? And I was like, because oh, I, I, I didn't know it was an option. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, like we can get on the phone we can start this process. I can get, I can talk to the guys and see what they feel about having you use the song. And I just like melted in my chair and I was like, are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me? Like it, it was just, it was insane. And, um, it definitely like started that because it just was perfect to go back to kind of the roots of like my love for punk um, because Rancid was, you know, one of the first bands that I listened to, one of the first punk bands I listened to. And so it was able to go back to my roots of like what I loved. And I was able to kind of pull from like, from Heidi where I had no shame in jamming out to my own entrance music. Whereas like, my character in WWE was like too cool to jam out, to, but now I'm air guitaring in the middle of the ring and yeah. like loving my entrance. Like I have no problem with, I can just be free and like jam out just like I'm at a concert with the fans. So it's like yeah. stuff like that, that I wanted to keep. Um, I wanted to be able to kind of just say how I felt without trying to adhere to, you know, what somebody else wanted me to say or, or anything like that. Um, you know, I wanted to keep with like my gear has like little bits of Heidi Loveless with like the stitching and stuff like that. Like that was, I was the rag doll. And so it was a lot of the stitching and stuff has that and then has the one legged thing. So like that I kept with like tradition. So I was able to just like with the vignettes that I did, it was just like little homages to yeah. the versions of myself before to create like this, like Frankenstein version of who I am now. <laughs> How much fun were you having putting together all of those vignettes and just getting that out, seeing the reaction of everyone being like, oh, shit, yeah, it's on. She's coming out on fire. Like what was um, what was sort of like the artistic process behind finding what those little Easter eggs were going to be and when you were going to release them and, and all that? It was so much fun because I kind of went pretty social media silent after I got released. Mm -hmm. Um, and I kind of felt that that was the way that I wanted it just because I didn't want to come out and really say anything until I knew I could speak from the most authentic place possible. Mm -hmm. Um, so the vignettes kind of happened, you know, who John Carlo is. Yeah. And so he was the one who kind of like approached me and we started talking and I had kind of talked to him a little bit about what my thoughts were and, and really how my journey had been as far as like, almost like my breakup with WWE. And so like, like where I was grieving and I was sad and I was upset about it. And I kind of had like panic and frustration and I'd kind of like talked to him about this and had a few ideas. And he kind of like meshed it into this like beautiful story of like me missing the train and, and seeing the sadness on my face. And then me hearing the riot squad song and, and, and like losing my, my and like getting upset and, and overwhelmed and then you know when I finally got to the city you know it was this the rebirth of like me jamming out in the middle of an alley um with a bunch of trash bags stuff behind me um <laughs> so yeah it was um it was it was amazing and then the reception was awesome the reception was better than anything I could have imagined mm -hmm. and it was one of the things that I loved about it is because we had a lot of easter eggs in there as to like what I was going to be called and and things like that um people were reading into stuff that may not have necessarily even been there. <laughs> like they were, they were like reading into some of the signs, um, that were just like on the, on the wall, um, right. in, in the alleyways or like, um, some of the pieces of paper that were in the windows of the bar and stuff like that. So it was one of those things where I was just loving seeing people like, it's what art is, is just yeah. interpretation and seeing people's different interpretations of what it meant of what, 
um, of what the Easter eggs were and stuff like that. I loved seeing all that. It was awesome. Yeah. It was funny. Like, I, cause I was kind of doing the similar thing of like looking, cause people would have like the screenshots of things. Cause I, I mm-hmm. mean, obviously seeing the videos come out and then like seeing the reaction, I'm like, wait, what is all in yeah. like, what all has been placed in here and seeing mm-hmm. like things slowed down. And it's just, it's, it's really cool to be able to invest in yourself like that. Mm-hmm and to take that time and to be able to make a big splash. I mean, as you're able to do when you're able to show up as a Joker in the battle Royal, uh, yeah. with AEW, what was that moment like for you? Girl, I, I feel like I got emotional. I watched it back <laughs> again the next day. I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> it was, uh, it was amazing. Like I, 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 I thought I knew what nervous was, but it was so much, it was so much of my own anticipation having like known what I was going to be doing. Um, and just like thinking about it over and over for, you know, a few months and everything. And, and then getting there and, you know, meeting everybody or seeing everybody again, um, was awesome. And like, I, I was just like, okay, this is, this is the first step. Like, this is the first step. I'm like, I can't mess this up. Like I can't and like, and I really, really hope. And I'd played it over and over and again in my head. I, anytime I'd listen to the song, like I'd play it in my yeah. head and hope that like, oh man, I hope this re- is the reaction that I really, I really want, but I didn't mm-hmm. expect it. I just hoped for it. Sure. Um, and when I was at the bottom of the stairs and they started chanting Ruby Soho before it ever came out, I just like, I, it was, I was like looking up and then I looked out at everybody and go, and like, I'm like, I um, I'm about, to, got goosebumps. I'm about to cry in this moment. I'm about to cry. Tony pops up from the other side of the, of the screen and goes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can like, pitch it. it was the best. And like, I couldn't believe, first of all, that they were chanting for me that, that that's, that's who they wanted. Secondly, they were chanting a name that I hadn't even called myself yet. Yeah. And that was amazing. And that was like, like I, I was, I told John Carlo, I was like, thank you so much for helping me do those videos. Cause that, that helped the spark of like letting people know that this is what I wanted to be mm-hmm. called. Um, and, uh, it was just like, like I said, everything had fallen together so perfectly. And then when my music hit and I went out, um, the, fa- the reaction on my face is, is, is every ounce of like genuine, like real authentic. Like I could not contain how happy I was in that moment. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to live right there forever. Cause I couldn't believe the reception that I got. I, I just couldn't believe it. I was just like, wow, like these people are excited that I'm here and I'm so, so excited to be here. We're sharing this moment together. Mm-hmm. And then hearing Ruby Soho behind me was unbelievable because I'm like, wow, this is like my love for punk rock, like something and my love for pro wrestling, something that's built who I am as a person coming together in this like one perfect moment. I came to the back afterwards. I was like, Hey, um, Tony, I, if, if you want, like, I can retire. If you want, like I can be done, <laughs> done. after that. He's like, you got stuff to do. You got stuff to do. I was like, okay. okay. Your book. <laughs> How about, um, when Sarah showed up at your, did she show up at your hotel? What happened there that she surprised you? So I, I, funny story, I got pulled over on the way to the show. Perfect. So I was like 15 Were you minutes speeding? late. What happened? Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was just so excited. I was so excited that I was just, I was speeding like a mad woman yeah. um, and uh, got pulled over, got a ticket. Terrible. But I'm like, it's freaking out. And like, I'm trying to calm myself down. I'm freaking out. Cause I feel like I'm like 15 minutes late. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm late and like, I, I got a ticket, but I can't even worry about that now. And like this moment is, and I'm texting Sarah, um, you know, at different points and being like, um, Hey girl, uh, I was going to call you, but like, I'm just trying to like stay focused and, and be calm right now. Um, but I'll text you when I get to the venue and she texts me back. She said, I'm here for you. And in my head, I'm just like, oh, she's here for me. Like, that's so sweet. Like that's, that's nice of her. And so like, I get to the venue, I have like a hood on and, and everybody's like trying to sneak me in whatever. And I get like my bag and I'm still flustered because I'm late and whatever. And I'm like excited. I'm walking in and I open the door and she's the first person (laughs) I see and she has cash with her. And I go, what? (laughs) And I just start bawling. And I was like, what? 
why, why, why are you? Huh? And I just like <laughs> hugged her and then I grabbed cash and I just like held him. I was like, what are you guys doing? Here? She said, I said, I'm here for you. And I was like, you are the worst. <laughs> and yeah, so apparently she'd had it planned for a while and she's terrible at keeping secrets. So she almost spilled it like three or four times the whole, like while she had it, she almost was like telling me about cash's first like airplane trip before I'm ever supposed to know about right. it. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was amazing. Cause she's always been there from all of our, like our, uh, our milestones in our career. Like we've yeah. been together, you know, since we first started. Um, and so for her to be there just made it that much more special. When did you guys first meet? Um, I was about three months in and she was about, three matches in so wait on the indies or yeah no on the indies and I so I think it was about 10 years a little over 10 years ago wow um let's talk about rampage from Friday because you and Brit really fucking did the damn thing um before me even getting eyes on it I had people texting me about it and seeing it online, how good does it feel to be able to go out there and just do your own thing and speak from the heart? I just, I remember going out there, I was jamming out to the music, whatever. And like within the first word that I said, when I had the microphone in my hand, like, as soon as I said, like, it just like, it just felt like freeing. Like I, when I heard my own voice echo from that microphone, I was like, I I just knew I was like free. Like I could just yeah. say whatever I wanted. I could just like, we just, we were just out to hurt each other's feelings. And like, we were about like to go below the belt and, yeah. you know, and, and, and we did. And it was just like, it was, it was an amazing thing to just have that microphone and be like, okay, my boss trusts me. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was, it was cool. It was very cool. Uh, so first singles match for the title against Britt Baker at Arthur Ashe stadium, what is going through your mind? What do you want to accomplish? And what do you kind of want the takeaway to be from being able to see you in this new light? So, yeah, this was, uh, this all happened way faster than I ever anticipated. Yeah. Um, you know, I only got here a couple of weeks ago, so I, I know that, you know, I don't have any time to waste. Like I have to prepare as much as humanly possible. And, you know, it's been a long time since I've had like that high caliber of a match, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I think the takeaway is just for me personally, is like, I need to prove to myself that I can do it. Um, cause it's been, it has been such a long time since, you know, I've had such like a, a high caliber, like singles match that I can really prove to myself and, you know, hopefully everybody else that like, there's a reason that y'all are excited to see me. There's a reason that I have so much more to offer. There's a reason that I'm here in this moment in this time. Um, and it's to prove that I, I, I still got it. And then I I hope I can, I honestly, I I honestly hope I can. So, um, I, I'm, I'm so, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. What but I'm a excited. card too. Holy. Like <laughs> I was, I was looking at, I'm looking at the matches. I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> like the fact, like no the pressure. fact that like Brian Danielson and like Kenny Omega is, is a match that is taking place. Yeah. That's real. And on this, this is, this is life. This is the life that we're living in. Yeah. Wrestling is so cool right now. Like wrestling is so cool. It I, is so f- Cool right now I, like, I, I what a time to be a fan to be a wrestler what a time what to time? be a fan yeah, yeah. that's what we were both. saying the same thing but backwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> same page but you know. yeah no it it is really cool it's so cool to see and like I love being able to see my friends thrive and see you in such a great spot and see you so happy and it's it's cool when you see someone and you're like oh she's exactly where she's supposed to be and you know not to be cliche but yeah things happen for a Mm -hmm. certain reason. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, this was your moment to be able to go do your own thing, uh, prove your worth as a singles competitor, as, as a performer, all of that. And to have so much, uh, I guess like power and positivity and all of that just on your side going into that is so cool to see. 
what was it like? I guess like, I mean, yes, everything is going really great for you right now. And it's awesome. It's so mm-hmm. cool to see. But looking on the other side of things, what do you think was not working in WWE? What was kind of happening on that like tail end of the Riot Squad breaking up? You guys all kind mm-hmm. of doing your own thing. What happened in your opinion? Honestly, I I, I, I wish I knew. Because um, like I said, it came as a, a huge a huge shock to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were, there were a lot of ones that, that I, I didn't, I didn't see coming. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 I liked my job at the time. Like I, I, I liked it. I, I didn't have a lot of problems. I love that locker room so much. Mm-hmm. I love the women, especially like the SmackDown women's locker room was one of my, some of my, the best times of my life. Yeah. Cause those women are just absolutely incredible people. Um, and, you know, Liv and I were, you know, working our asses off to try and be the most cohesive tag team we possibly could. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't, I, I, I have no idea really, um, what, what was, what maybe I was missing or what, um, didn't work or how I didn't fit quite with them. Um, it, it obviously I, I fit better somewhere else. And I, I felt that the moment that I came out, Mm -hmm. um, at all out, I was like, this is like, like you said, this is where I'm meant to be. Like, this is where I'm supposed to be AEW. Like, these are my people. Like, this is the place that I feel the most at home. Um, but you know, like, like I said, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, I, I, I really, I, I, I wish I did. Um, but I, I, I didn't talk to a lot of people while I, like I did, I tried, I tried to, but like, I didn't get a lot of feedback while I was there. So, um, I didn't always know if there was something that I was doing wrong. Um, but well, that's always uh, sort of the frustrating part too. And, um, you know, I, I know that I could feel that for myself at certain points of being like, Hey, I'm not really sure what's happening, but no one's really saying mm-hmm. anything to me. And that stresses me out. Everyone's just mm-hmm. like, cool, carry on doing what you're doing, but you're like, yeah. something's not working here. Yeah. It just doesn't feel right. Yeah. And that was, that was all I ever really wanted. Like I just wanted to be better, to do better, to do better for the product. And I, you know, I, I, I sent, I submitted a lot of stuff and, and tried to get as much feedback as I could, but I, it wasn't always, um, connecting with getting honest feedback. And, um, I just, I, I, I wish I knew, but I don't. What were some of the conversations or like, what was your relationship with Vince? Like, did you have a relationship with him or is it sort of like lack thereof? Yeah, not really. We didn't speak very often. Like I'd see him after matches and stuff, but we, we didn't really talk. He was always so busy. He was so busy. Um, so we didn't, we didn't talk much and not, and even after matches, we didn't really, we talked much. Sometimes he would say like one thing here or there, but other than that, like, I think I spoke to him in his office probably in five years or four years, twice, I think twice. Um, but I was also not one of those people. I, I, I guess like and maybe this was my own fault that I wasn't like at his door all the time. Um, you know, and I wasn't trying to like make more of a connection and make more of a, a relationship, but it's I hard was, to I, do that. It's hard to do that. And it's like, it is I don't yeah. want to say like that. It's like time consuming, but it's like the days are busy. Like mm-hmm. TV days are busy. You know, he is busy. And when you're sitting out there twiddling your thumbs, waiting for the, like, mm-hmm. can I go in? Don't I go in? What's happening? When's the right time? Has he eaten yet? Mm-hmm. What's, you know, yeah. all the things that you've got to like run down that list. It, it's hard to like establish that relationship mm-hmm. and to try to establish it within the five minutes that you might get with him. It can be really difficult. A hundred percent. And like I said, he's so busy that I, I feel like I'm one of those people, like as an employee, like you hired me because you trust me that I know what I'm doing. And I feel like unless you, unless I hear that, like, you don't like something that I'm doing and I need to talk to you so we can address it. I don't feel like I need to waste your time. Yeah. 
And that was one of the things is like, I don't, I don't want to insult you by wasting your time and being like, Oh, Hey, like, why am I not booked? Like, I understand like it's wrestling. Like I get it. I, I, I was not one of those people that liked to do that. Like, unless I had something to talk to him about. Mm -hmm. And like I said, maybe I needed to be a little bit more forceful or or about trying to build a relationship with him and just talk to him. But like with him being so busy, I didn't want, unless I had something important to talk to him about, like, I didn't want to waste his time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hear that it, it, cause it's, it's just, it's awkward. It's, it's very mm-hmm. awkward. And yeah, I, I, I can definitely relate to that. I mean, there were so many times that I'm like, I feel like I should talk to Vince more, but mm-hmm. also it. <laughs> not like, but, yeah, it, like, but like, also thing, like, I, like, I, I, you, hi- you hired me because you, yeah. you trust that I know what I'm doing. And until yeah. I hear something different that I'm not doing something correct, then I'm just going to trust that what I'm doing is okay for you. Yeah. And that should be it, you know, and that, and that was just like, my mentality is just like very, like, I just work very direct. Like if you think I am in the bed, tell me if you think that I am doing great. Cool. If you think that I need to work on something, tell me and, and, and I'll do it. Like I'm, I, I just like directness. Um, and, and it was difficult just because there was just a lot of people that, you know, were in pulled in different directions. So, um, not that it's a bad thing. There's it's a, it's a huge company and like, there's a lot of people in charge. Um, so it's not a bad thing. It just, it just maybe wasn't the right place for me. Yeah. Yeah. And here we are now, here we are. Everything is great. Every a train is on the tracks. We're all moving in the right direction. It's great. Um, I was getting ready for this interview with you and, mm-hmm. uh, I was trying to look up a bunch of different information on you. There's not Uh-oh. a lot out there. Like, I feel like you have done a very good job of clamping it down. There's not a lot of like real personal information about you other than like mm-hmm. you wanted to be a teacher. Mm-hmm. This was yeah. like, this uh, was another, okay. Years and years and years ago, a lifetime ago, but yeah, a okay. music teacher. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, mm-hmm. what, 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 uh, what's your music background? Uh, I sang in choir for a number of years. I did, I did not some, know that. Yeah. I did some theater and, uh, and I wanted to be a choir teacher, wow. but turns out can't read music. Like I can't, I can oh. read it, but I yeah. can't sight read and like read it and then have it come out of my mouth. Like it doesn't, it something doesn't click in there. Um, and so actually when I, I went to try out for the music program at grand Valley state university in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that was the part that I failed in. And then after that, I dropped out of college to fake fight my underwear. (laughs) So yeah, made my parents proud. What what are your go-to songs? I did not know that you have this voice. Um, so when I, I, the one that I can think of, cause like I said, it feels like a lifetime ago, you know, it feels like a lifetime ago that I, uh, that I, um, that I sang, but like, I, I think I, I, I sang, um, Ave Maria, I think at some point, um, for my, for my audition, I think was, was one of them. Does this audition Um, like live somewhere? I'm I'm obviously, I got, I hope not. I hope not. No, uh, no. Oh my goodness. uh, (laughs) I, I, I don't sing very often, like ever. Um, sometimes in my car, I think I'm way better. I'm not great at like radio songs. Like if you give me like show tunes or or like choir music I'm okay but um but yeah yeah I think uh I think if I remember correctly that's the one that I remember is my audition piece but other than that like I said I did a lot of musicals so those were those were really fun was that something something that you thought about doing though of like getting into like musical theater or like being in a band or something like that I I I wanted to I minored in theater so I majored in um and I, I start off majoring in dental hygiene, as okay. funny as that is. Interesting. Uh, considering, uh, considering Stuck who on my that DMD. Is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't like it. Um, and it's no offense to anybody who does it, but I just, it wasn't for me, but my, uh, my, my cousins did it. And my parents were like, this pays a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, and so I switched it to something that I felt like was going to be more fulfilling to me. Um, so I did um, music um, education and with a minor in um, theater um, and bounced around from a couple different majors between like education and music and theater and stuff like that. But um, I, I just really, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed acting and I enjoyed um, singing and stuff like that. I didn't know 
I came from a small town. So never in my life did I think that that was like a, a fathomable thing to ever play, like do musical theater as an occupation. Sure. Um, but I, uh, I wanted to at least just try to be a choir teacher. And like, obviously that didn't work out, but everything happens for a reason. Cause yeah. right after I had, I had, I passed that audition, had I passed the sight reading portion of that audition, I would be a choir teacher right now. And I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. So it's crazy, crazy. to think that things like that would have happened. How was like that first time of performing for you? I mean, if you're like socially awkward, you don't have a ton of friends, were you shaking in your boots or were you like, let me get out there. I think that I'm going to be able to connect and like flourish in under the, under that bright light. I, I, it, I was terrified. I was, I was so nervous, so nervous that, um, that I was gonna, I was gonna fail at this. And I, I genuinely was just like at one point where I was like, okay, well, I mean, even if I do, you know, at least I had fun doing it. And I never had that mentality with anything like, oh, if I fail, at least I had fun. Like most of it, I just held myself to this. Like, I have to, I have to be good at it. I have to try. I have to like, I have to succeed in it. And I was just able to kind of let go of all of those pressures and expectations that like some of which I put on myself, like mm-hmm. I have to make friends. I have to look this certain way in order to have these people like me. And, and I had got to let go of that expectation. And as soon as I walked out, I was just able to, I like just screamed at the top of my lungs. Like I was, I was that girl. Like, come on. I'm like, oh. <laughs> hey, um, but, but again, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> throw something out there yeah. and then reel it back in. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> real hard, reel it right back in. (laughs) But, uh, but yeah, it was, I was in, uh, a sports bra and shorts from, uh, it wasn't even like Dick sporting goods. It was like Dunham's or something like that. Like a, like a, a different, uh, sporting goods place. But, um, and you know, something I had like some tights I got from hot topic or something like that. I don't remember, yeah. but I just, I had a blast and it was like an adrenaline rush that I, I, I loved. And it, the girl I was with, um, I don't think she wrestles anymore, but she was, she, she was very sweet and took great care of me. And I was just like, Oh, this is awesome. And then I started to see what, like, I didn't realize what the Indies was until like, I kind of came across, um, my trainer, Billy rock. Um, he kind of showed me like, and opened me up to this world of like, Oh, wow. Look at all these independents. Like, look at all yeah. these big places that exist. Cause in my head, it's just this small little place in Northern Indiana. Like that's, it, there's nothing outside of that. And then that was when I was like, okay, I need to get properly trained. I need to really see where this goes. Cause like, this is going to be the only time that I can do it. Well, good thing that you did. I'm glad that you bought those boots and made that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you talk about your tiny hops and, um, you know, from like the athletic standpoint of things, when it comes to professional wrestling, what was it like for you to be in the ring with an athlete, the caliber of uh, Ronda Rousey? Cause you guys did a lot of house shows together. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, Rhonda's so great. Like I can't say enough nice things about her. Um, she is incredibly humble and she always like approached it from a way of like, I know that this is a sport that I don't know a lot about, but I want to learn. And she absorbed it all like a sponge. Her instincts were on point. Like she picked everything up super quickly. Um, and she was, she was just amazing. She was so fun to work with. And it was, it was such an awesome thing to, cause like a lot of times where you kind of feel like things get monotonous when you approach matches and stuff where you're like, okay, like I approach this opponent kind of this, the same way as I approach this one with her, it was something where I had to like hit a hard reset and be like, okay, well, this girl can't get me in a hold. If she does, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Um, and, uh, it was awesome to be able to have to think differently than I had, um, previously with, the, with opponents. Like I, I had to like approach it differently and it just got my creative juices flowing and, and hers as well. And, uh, and yeah, she was, she was awesome. And, I like, I went up to her. I was like, what are all, I need all the things that are illegal in mixed martial arts. Tell me all of them. Cause those are all the things I'm going to do to you. <laughs> um, and yeah, so she, uh, and she was the one who rallied for, um, the match, the singles match that we had, um, after elimination chamber, 
she was the one who asked for that. And so I thought that was, that was really, really awesome of her to do that. And that was the first time in a singles match and the only time I believe it as a singles match that I main evented Monday night raw. Hell yeah. Well, kudos yeah. to Rhonda. Going to be a mom yeah. soon. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. That child. What an athlete. Be that kid. Rid- it, the, if, if cash and her little one ever like meet when they're all grown up but they and have like a boy or combine, a girl, right? I, I thought it, is it, is it a girl? I don't remember. Girl? I'm not sure. Either way, if they meet and are friends or are like the, it, like the world will explode between like <laughs> the Rose and the Rousey, yeah. the bra- the Browsey family, like, oh my goodness. <laughs> The world's not ready for that. I think it's just oh, I love that. Terminator is just what the, the product of that will be. Um, so your debut in AEW, uh, you, you get to be part of the battle Royal. What uh, you got to, you got to mess around with a bunch of the girls in mm-hmm. AEW. Obviously you've got singles match with Brit coming up. Who else do you really want to work with? So there's, there's a bunch of them that um, kind of, slipped through my fingers on the indies that I, I, I feel like I've wanted to work with for quite some time. Um, the, the one that comes to mind first and foremost is Serena deep. Yeah. Um, Serena, I've been like a step behind her, um, a, a, a lot through our careers. Like she made it to shimmer. And then when she left shimmer that I was there and then she went to OVW after OVW, like she left, I was there and then WWE and now AEW. Like, so I've yeah. just been like, right behind her this whole time. Yeah. 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 And I, I'm a huge fan of her. I think she's incredible. Um, honestly throws probably the best euros aside from Cesaro that I've ever seen. (laughs) Um, (laughs) and, uh, so she's definitely one of them. Um, I think that, um, I think that, uh, Diamante is amazing. Big Swole is amazing. Um, and those are two girls that, uh, Diamante, I had a, a singles match with a long time ago. Um, but it was in a tournament and I was terrible. So like, I want to make up for that. Um, but like, yeah, but those girls are amazing. Um, and I've, I've, I've wanted to work with Nyla Rose for a long time. Um, she, she's impressive. She's, she's impressive as all hell. So like, there's, that's the thing is like, I just, I'm so excited at the possibilities of all the girls that I get to face and all the different kinds of fight that they're going to bring out in me. So I'm, I'm pumped. Who else do you want to see um, show up in AEW? I mean, there's a, quite a few women, uh, some top notch caliber mm-hmm. women that have been released by WWE. Who do you want to see show up there? It's so hard. I feel like that's a, it's such a hard question to answer just because like, I know that AEW is such a perfect fit for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I know that because I, I can feel that in my heart. I don't know like who else is like where people's paths are leading them and what's best for them. Yeah. Um, so uh, like, I, I just, I just want to see everybody at their happiest wherever that may be. Honestly, um, I want to see the current roster that we have flourish and succeed. And um, I want to see my friends just in a place that, you know, that I can happily say that I am like where I, I feel comfortable where I'm at and, and feel at home. I want to see my friends. And if that is AEW, hell yeah. yeah. Like I want them there. Um, if it's not like, if it's somewhere else, if it's on the Indies, um, if it's maybe not wrestling at all, like whatever it is, like I want my, all my friends that I, I want to see succeed in the best way possible, wherever they're the most comfortable. Do you feel that it is important to see some people show? I mean, I mean, I guess like you can use like Chelsea Green as a prime example. She's kind of all mm-hmm. over the place um, mm-hmm. from, from Ring of Honor, NWA, uh, Impact. Mm-hmm. Uh, is she doing Ring of Honor? Yes, mm-hmm. right? Yep. All three yep. of them. Yep. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, for her to be able to pop up on all these other promotions rather than I think the sort of knee jerk reaction for everyone's like they're going to AEW. Mm-hmm. But there are all these other promotions that are still crushing it. And we want to mm-hmm. see them continue to build and to grow and to still have depth of their rosters there. 100%. So, you know, I think it, it's really cool to just see people kind of pop up wherever wherever. And that's, that's, what's great too, is like one of the things that I love about AEW is AEW kind of has their hand a little bit in, in a, in a lot of different places in yeah. impact and NWA and everything like that. And so like a lot of matchups that like 
you thought maybe you could never see again. Like you can, you get to see yeah. because like, we're all kind of working together just to create and like make as much amazing content as we can in the world of pro wrestling. Yeah. Um, and you know, it is it's sometimes like a, a like a, a hard contract isn't for everybody. Like mm-hmm. I, like I think Chelsea just, Chelsea's a busy girl. She moving loves to be moving she loves to be moving and shaking. And so she's, she's doing a little bit of everything all over the place. And I, I think that's awesome. I think that's great. And, yeah. and I think that, um, it isn't always necessary to just go back to like this contracted thing. Yeah. You can do everything. Like there's, yeah. there's options out there everywhere. And, and I think each women's division and each one is, is doing the damn thing, you Absolutely. know, yeah. like they're, they're really, really, really goal oriented. And like, we're about to show you like that this is the division to be. And I think it's just like a lot of healthy competition, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, okay. Before I let you go, uh, okay. you're covered in tattoos. Have you gotten any new tattoos since you left WWE to like commemorate no, anything? I don't think so. No, no. Cause I did. I got, this is my most recent one. This is my most recent one. Ooh. This one here, oh, but this cat? one, yeah, she's there. Yeah, little thing. Little yeah. Um, but yeah, this is my, but I got that one before I left WWE. I wanted to, but I just, I, I, I'm too, I'm running out of ideas at this point. Like I'm running out <laughs> yeah. of stuff. Um, and I, yeah, I, I don't know. I like, I still got to find an artist out here in Ohio that I, you know, can come to know and trust. Yeah. Um, cause my girl who did all my work in Indiana, who like did my neck and stuff like that. Like, um, I can still go back to her, but she's very busy because she's great at what she does. So, um, yeah, so I'm still trying to figure out, uh, I would like to finish this. Um, and I would, potentially like to do my back, but, um, I'm going to give my dad a heart attack before <laughs> the end of all of it. And he's like, do you, Sorry, dad. Do, you, do you need, do you need another one? And I was like, can I just say that? Like, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll just, I'll, he's like, can you just promise me you're not going to get another one? I was like, no, I'm not promising you that. Like, can you, I was like, how about I promise you? I won't tattoo my face. And he was like, is that all I get? And I was like, that's the best you get. And he's like, fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take it dad. <laughs> So oh, sorry. Do your parents yeah. get to come out to shows? Um, sometimes, um, not always, but you know, they always watch stuff. Yeah. The thing that they focus so much on that I, that I love that it's, it's just cute how, what they focus on is, is the match for sure, but they watch a lot of my interviews. Mm-hmm. So they'll guaranteed probably watch this one, but they yeah. watch a lot of my interviews. Um, like they my like the press conference thing we did after all out. And my dad is just, I was like, you're just you're just so well spoken like you just you just sound you just sound professional like like he'll talk about that 10 times longer than he'll talk about like oh you wrestled and you did this like but you just you just handle yourself so well and I'm like thanks pops I I appreciate it they focus so much on like the press conference I'm like okay you you know I raised you right I did I did wrestle yeah I I did I did wrestle I I, I'm number one contender for the oh you don't know what that means all right cool great great thanks (laughs) dad much appreciated that's the best well hi mom hi dad thanks for watching the interview if you're watching um all right so next time that I have you on the show we're gonna turn Mm -hmm. This into a cribs episode because I would love to see what your whole house looks like. It looks of course. so I'll give damn you the grand cool. tour. I'll or maybe I'll just one. be able to come visit soon. You have to. You yes. have to. I want to see. Those okay, horses. so I have to know. I have learned this over. I've learned a lot of men are afraid of horses. Really? I think yeah. The majority of like I have like guy friends or or like a lot of people that I've met are afraid of horses like the guys are and I don't know why maybe it's because like they're afraid of something that's bigger than them that could potentially maybe. I don't know if it's like more of like a, an emotional connection that girls have but like a lot of guys I know are, are are afraid of horses not all obviously yeah is John afraid of horses I don't know that's a good yeah. question but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he was <laughs> Because he's kind of weird about like he loves animals and like, he loves our dogs. If mm-hmm. if he passes any dog on the street, he like has the like the dog of voice course. that he does that yeah. he does for our daughter. It's the same voice. Um, but he that. like he will get down on the ground and like smooch a dog in the face, doesn't care. Yeah. But like he will he doesn't want to go in the ocean. And we were in Hawaii on our honeymoon and we're like snorkeling mm-hmm. and uh there was a sea turtle by him. You would have thought jaws was by him like he the panic he had he grabbed my foot like a sea ah! turtle yeah. a sea turtle out on the best of days anyways because he this he honestly thinks everything's a shark 
Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if he was a little hesitant around the horse. Yeah. But I think once he realized that horses are like big dogs, mm-hmm. that he would love the horse. Yeah. So it might so just we'll take introduce, a second, but he could so, get there. Yeah. So we'll introduce first. We got to introduce JB. We'll we'll just we'll get Jelly Bean there. Get the mini. Actually, she looks like a big dog. She so would, like he would that, love jelly bean. That one actually, will be easy. I just remembered that I took him horseback riding for his birthday years ago and he mm. loved it. So actually okay. maybe he wouldn't No, I think he would actually be good with a horse. So okay. this was, okay. what do you call it when it's like a horse bred with a donkey? I don't know. There's a term. I've seen for it. That. I've There's seen a term it. For it and I don't know what it but is. I but don't know what it's that's called. That's what we got put on. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was like this um, out by Red Rock Canyon in Las Vegas, where we live. You can do these like morning crest trail things. So we went to do mm-hmm. that. And it's awesome. You go, it's like the sun's yeah. coming up and it's nice Ugh. and cold. And you're on the back of a horse. I love it. It was really, really cool. But we had the ones that are bred with donkeys, whatever yeah. the they're called. And, but they're more <laughs> really... sure footed because they have tinier yeah. hooves. So they yeah. can like, uh, so Emilio just told me it's called a hinny. It's not a hinny. Wait, they're both saying hinny. Both my producers right now are texting me saying that it's a hinny. I don't think that's the term in a mule. Isn't a mule just a donkey? Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought I don't too. Know. Anyways, I don't know much whatever. about donkeys. Someone else will chime in. I, I am know, though, but I'm going to get pygmy goats probably by the time you guys get here. <gasps> yes. Yes. Because I just, I just see too many videos on Instagram and, and, and stuff of the little goats jumping onto the, either the donkeys or the yes. mini horses. And it's my favorite thing in the world. They're just, Oh, they're so cute. What are the ones so, that fall down when they hear like a loud sound? I think it's pygmy goats. I think, I think they do that. I think they do that. And I <laughs> think there's a different, I, there's a different, I don't think it's, it's not fainting goats. I don't, I don't, I, I'm not sure. I'm, yeah. I, I'm, I still fresh. We're not good on, on the, the goat terms family. like some of these animals. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. we know them we like them. <laughs> yeah. We know we like them. They're all so, welcome. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, you guys are gonna have to come come visit, definitely hang out on on this little hooligan hideaway. That have you have you here. named your so. uh, your farm? Do, do yes. Do farms need names? What's its name? It's it's the hooligan hideaway. Okay, is what I called it because like uh, my my YouTube Twitch stuff is um, hooligans unite. So I've just called it the hooligans hideaway because it's it. just like tucked back in here and stuff like that. So yeah, I got my own little freak show around here. I love so it. <laughs> they keep me busy. I love that. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. It was a blast to have you on here. Get the to best. just see you flourishing, doing your thing. Super excited to see the singles match uh, for the women's championship in AEW against Britt Baker. We will all be watching and uh, you can just prove to the world again why you're such a bad mother hell yeah <laughs> sorry best. dad sorry oh, dad we didn't mean we, were, uh, we spoke really well and now we just i had to throw mother in there I this is yeah throw it in there. he'll sorry, love it dad. he'll love it <laughs> all right i'll see you soon thanks sister i miss you i miss you too 